Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today, I'll be breaking down how to invest during a stock market crash, correction, or a recession. In the past week, I've been getting a ton of questions on the current state of the stock market and the coronavirus. People have been asking me, should I cash out now? Should I wait and see what happens? Or should I start investing? So I decided to make a video sharing my thoughts on the situation. And I wanna highlight what you should do and what you shouldn't do during a market downturn. Right off the bat, I wanna tell you guys, do not panic. I repeat, do not panic. For the vast majority of you guys out there, the only way you will actually lose money right now is if you panic, if you give into fear, and if you sell your stocks at a loss. The worst thing you could do right now is to sell your stocks. For some of you guys who are new to investing, I get it. It can be scary to see the news every day and to hear that once again we've had an unprecedented 10% drop in the market in a single day. This situation is fairly new to me as well. The last time we had a true stock market crash was the real estate collapse back in 2008. I was still in high school back then. So I didn't fully experience the fear and uncertainty of that crash since as a 17 year old kid, I didn't have any money to invest even if I wanted to. So now this is the first stock market crash which is actually impacting my money. This is the first time in my life where I log into my Questrade account and I see red losses across the board. In fact, the first thing I see when I log in is the summary page. In big red letters, I see that I have lost $4,000 in just a few days. I get that the knee jerk reaction is to panic saying, what do you mean I lost $4,000? Or I knew investing in the stock market was too risky and I should cash out now before I lose everything. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm not panicking at all. And that's because I know that I haven't actually lost any money. The markets are down and my stocks are worth 30% less than what they were just last week. And I don't care. I don't care about the current stock prices for two reasons. First, that $4,000 loss is not real. It's an imaginary number that doesn't become real unless I sell. If I don't sell my stocks, I haven't actually lost a penny. Second, I don't care about the short-term performance of my stocks. I'm playing the long game. I am only investing in money that I will not need for at least 10 years. So let's start with the first point. The worst thing you can do right now is to sell. If you sell right now, you will lose money. But if you hold onto your stocks, this stock market crash will not affect you. You will be absolutely fine. The price of a stock day to day does not matter. Remember, in my first investing video about the stock market, I said that there is no inherent monetary value of a stock. The price of a stock is only what someone else is willing to pay for it. If someone wants to pay $100 for a share, that stock is now worth $100. But if people are only willing to pay $50 for that same share, that stock is now only worth $50. That is what is happening right now. People are panicking and so they wanna get rid of their stocks and cash out as soon as possible. They don't care about the price anymore. They just want the safety and security of holding cash in their hands. And so they sell their stocks at lower and lower prices, desperate to sell it off. Before you know it, the value of the stock has dropped 10% in a single day but nothing has actually changed with the company itself. It's still the same great company offering the same great product or service it was last week. It hasn't laid off workers, it's still earning money. Everything with the company itself is the same. It's just that now its stock price has plummeted. Some companies actually will have their profits affected by this crisis. For example, airline companies will have their earnings reduced with the recent travel bans, and energy companies will probably have their earnings affected because of the drop in oil prices. But these are still strong, secure companies, and they will recover. The only stocks that you should even consider selling are companies that you don't think will survive. Newer and risky penny stocks like marijuana stocks, which were already volatile, are now dangerously close to zero and reaching bankruptcy. I always warn people to avoid these risky speculative penny stocks in the first place, but especially at times like now. If you sell these penny stocks now, you will lose money, no question. But you have to be honest with yourself. Do you think that this company will survive? Do you think that this company will still be around two years from now? If this company hits zero, you have lost everything. It doesn't matter if you own 10 shares or 10,000 shares, it's now worth zero. I hope none of you guys have serious money invested in these risky penny stocks. But if you do, it might be worth selling these stocks now and recover at least a fraction of the cash that you invested with. And I hope you take this as a lesson that the stock market is not a way to get rich quick. Again, this is the only situation where I would even consider to sell stocks right now. For everyone else, stay calm and keep holding. If you're invested in established and secure companies, companies that you know will be here 10, 20, 30 years from now, do not sell. Sure, the stock price might be down 30% of what it was just two weeks ago, but that does not matter. The only time it matters what your investment is worth is when you want to sell. What really matters is the number of shares you own in a company 
and the number of shares has not changed. If I owned 100 shares of TD last week, I still own the same 100 shares of TD today, and I'm still receiving the same dividend from those 100 shares. I don't care about the price of each share as it goes up and down. It's the same principle as owning a house. If you own a house, you don't actually care about the value of the house day to day. You still own the same solid house. The only time you ever care about the value of the house is when you decide to sell it. Let's say in 2008, when the housing market collapsed, your house lost $200,000 worth of value. Did you care? Did that affect your house at all or the quality of life at home? No, no one is forcing you to sell your house at a loss. No one reached into your bank account and stole $200,000 from you. You kept living in that same house year after year and after a while, it recovered its value. The same thing happens with your stocks and ETFs. Until you actually sell those stocks, that loss is not real. So hold on to your stocks, let them recover, and in the meantime, continue to collect those dividends. The second reason I'm not panicking about the stock market is because I don't care about short-term performance. I only care about the long-term. I know that there will be times when the market is up and times when the market is down. The stock market works in cycles. Roughly every 10 years or so, there is a significant stock market decline, correction, or even a recession. That is normal and it's to be expected. I didn't know that the stock market would crash last week but I knew that it would crash sometime. And I also know that the stock market will recover in a matter of months, maybe even a year. And then the market will continue its overall upward climb. Looking at the US stock market, the S&P 500 index, you can see that it has plummeted but only in the short term. Even though in short term, it looks like the stock market has hit rock bottom. But if you zoom out a little, you can see that the market today is actually higher than it was in 2017. Things look bad right now. So sure, in the short term of a few months or a year, yeah, the stock market has lost money. But looking at three years, even though things look so bad right now, the stock market has still made money in these past three years. Looking out further, 10 years ago, the US market today is worth more than double what it was back in 2009. That's why do not invest in the short term and don't stress out or worry about the short term performance. We only care about the long term growth over the course of 10, 20, 30 years. I've said it many times, the money you invest in the stock market should be money that you do not need and money that you will not touch for at least 10 years. If you're planning on making a down payment for a house in a few years, or if you're planning on paying your child's college tuition next year, do not invest this money in the stock market, since in the short term, you might make a profit, but you could also lose that money very quickly. But in the long term, over 20 years, you are historically guaranteed to make a profit. Okay, so I've talked about what you should not do during a stock market crash, but what should you do? Right now, most people should do two things, boost their emergency savings fund, and if you have cash, invest further in the stock market to buy those ETFs and stocks at a huge discount. First, let's talk about the emergency fund. Since day one, I have always stressed the importance of establishing an emergency fund. In fact, the very first investing video I ever made was the four steps to become wealthy. Step number three in that video was setting up an emergency fund. And only after you have that safety net set up should you even consider investing in the stock market. Your emergency fund should be a minimum of $3,000. And if you have a family or kids that depend on you, you should easily double that. This emergency fund should be able to sustain you for at least three months if you were to lose your job and thus lose your paycheck tomorrow. You should always have this emergency fund topped up so that if anything unexpected happens, say your car breaks down, you have to go to the vet, or you have to buy a new furnace, you always have this money available to pay for these emergencies. You do not wanna be forced to sell your stocks out of desperation. If you need $2,000 today and you are forced to sell your stocks to get this money, almost all of your stocks are down right now. So if you sell, you will be losing money. This emergency fund acts as a buffer to shield your investments from ever being touched. And don't get greedy. I'm about to tell you that right now is one of the best opportunities in our lifetime to invest in the stock market. But do not burn through your emergency fund to invest in stocks right now. If anything, you should boost your emergency fund by around $1,000 or $2,000 as soon as you can, especially if you are working in an industry which is directly affected by the COVID-19 virus. If you work in the tourism industry for a hotel, airline, or cruise ship, or if you work for a sports arena or at a university, your work hours and your income are very likely to be reduced in these next few months and your job itself might actually be threatened. If you are in that situation and you don't know if you will have income next month, do not invest in the stock market right now. Don't sell any stocks, but definitely don't buy any stocks either. If you're worried about your income, now is the time to be extremely frugal, 
tighten up your budget and put all of your money into a high interest savings account. You need to boost your emergency fund to get you by these next few months in case you lose your job. To add insult to injury, the federal bank has recently dropped their interest rates. And so all the savings accounts out there have also dropped their interest rates. As of today, some of the online banks I can suggest to park your savings in are Alternabank, Motive Financial, and EQ Bank. All offer 2% interest on their high interest savings account. LBC Digital offers 2.2% interest and Wealth Simple Cash, which just dropped their interest rates down to 1.4%. In the next few weeks, it's possible that these banks will drop their interest rates even further. But still, if you are not certain about the security of your job and your income in these next few months, park all of your excess money in a savings account. Do not try to invest in the stock market right now. There's a good chance that you'll need this money to pay your bills soon. And a savings account is the only way to ensure your money is safe. But what if you're one of the lucky ones? Let's say your job and income are totally secure. You've already topped up your emergency fund and you have a bit of cash on hand. What should you do? Well, in that case, this market crash will be one of the best investing opportunities in your lifetime. Almost every single stock and ETF in the US and Canadian market is down right now. These investments are down. And again, nothing has actually changed with these companies. They are still strong, established and secure companies, which will continue to make money. But due to the market panic, their stock prices have dropped by 20 or 30%. If you're already invested in these companies, don't sell, continue to hold onto these stocks. But if you have cash right now and you don't need this money for the next five to 10 years, this is an incredible time to buy these blue chip stocks at an enormous discount. Let's look at one of my favorite Canadian dividend stocks, TD Toronto Dominion Bank. I've already talked about why I love to invest in TD stock in my past video, my top three Canadian dividend stocks. Everything I said about TD stock back then is still true today. A month ago in February, you could buy a share of TD stock for $75 and each share of TD would pay you a dividend of 79 cents every quarter. So each share pays you a dividend of $3 and 16 cents every year. And at a share price of 75, that equates to a dividend yield of 4.2%, which is awesome and well worth investing in. If I had $10,000 a month ago at $75 a share, I could afford to buy 133 shares of TD. Each share pays me $3.16, so in total, my investment would give me $420 a year in dividends. But now, the share price of TD has dropped by over 30% to only $50 a share. This is a 30% discount of a high quality blue chip stock. This kind of sale only happens once in a decade. Each stock still pays out the same dividend of 79 cents a quarter or $3.16 a year. Now I'm getting the same income, but each share only costs $50. And so my dividend yield is now much higher at 6.3%. If I had $10,000 today at $50 a share, I could afford to buy 200 shares of TD stock. Whereas just a month ago, I could only afford 133 shares. Each of these 200 shares pay me the exact same dividend of $3.16 a year. And so my $10,000 investment now pays me $630 a year. A month ago, the same $10,000 investment would only give me $420 a year. Buying high quality dividend stocks now at a discounted price gives me a 50% increase in the passive income I would normally expect from these stocks. And that's just considering the dividends. This is also a great opportunity to maximize your capital gains. Let's say hypothetically in 2030, TD reaches a share price of $100 per share. Last month, we invested $10,000 at $75 a share, and so we bought 133 shares. Now let's consider if we invested $10,000 today at a discounted price of $50 a share, we would be able to buy 200 shares of TD. Fast forward to the year 2030, and every single one of those shares are now worth $100. It doesn't matter when we bought those shares or how much we paid for them. Every single share of TD is now worth $100. So if we invested last month, we have 133 shares for a combined value of $13,300. But if we invested today at a discount, we would have 200 shares for a total value of $20,000. Ignoring dividends, just looking at capital appreciation. If we bought those shares today at a discount and sold them 10 years later, we would have made an additional $6,700 in capital gains. Putting this boost in capital gains and dividends, you can see that investing in quality stocks now at a discounted price is a huge opportunity to build your long-term wealth. Of course, that doesn't mean you should invest in any cheap stock at a discount. Only invest in quality, secure companies that you know will be able to survive this market downturn. You might be thinking, yeah, that sounds like an ideal case, but what if dividends get cut? That's a valid concern. Some companies, even established ones, may reduce or cut their dividends if their revenue is affected. 
But let's look at TD. TD has never missed a dividend payment in 162 years, and they are not going to start now. Plus, TD has an extremely healthy dividend payout ratio of only 44%. That means that only 44% of TD's profits go out to investors as dividends, leaving the company with 56% of its net income to grow and protect itself. Even if TD does see reduced profits these next coming months, with such a low payout ratio, TD could see a huge drop in profits, and they would still be able to comfortably afford dividends, and maybe even increase their dividends to attract further investors. If you're looking for some solid dividend stocks and dividend ETFs to invest in, especially right now, click the pop-up at the top right to check out my stock pick recommendation videos. The last piece of advice I can tell you guys is that if you have a large pile of cash right now, don't spend it all at once. It's very true that almost every single stock and ETF is down right now. So investing today is almost guaranteed to be better than investing a month ago. But we don't know if we have reached the bottom yet. Next week, the markets might start to climb back up, but they can just as easily fall further down. I would never encourage anyone to try to time the market. It can't be done. Don't sit on the sidelines with a pile of cash waiting and waiting for the absolute bottom because you'll never be able to find it. By definition, you won't know if you are at the lowest point until things start climbing back up and by then you've already missed it. My advice would be to spread out your available cash throughout the next several weeks. A lot of people have been asking me this question. If you have $10,000 in cash right now, my advice would be to invest $2,000 this week, invest another $2,000 next week, and another $2,000 the week after that. Invest this money over the course of the next five weeks. Next week, the prices might go up, but the week after, prices might plummet even further. No one knows when the bottom of the market will happen, so don't try to time it. Instead, spread out your investment over the course of the next few weeks, and you'll smoothen out the volatility of the market. You'll end up with a nice average value of the market, and this strategy is called dollar cost averaging. Some days, this average value will be better than the current market. Some days, it will be worse. But overall, it is a safer, less stressful, and more rational way to invest. If you're not sure how to actually buy stocks or ETFs, click the pop-up at the top right to check out my Quest Trade tutorials, where I give a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to buy Canadian and US stocks using Quest Trade, my favorite online broker. And if you'd like to get started with Quest Trade, click my referral link in the box below, and you'll get $50 in commission-free trades when you sign up. That basically means your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. I apologize for the length of this video. I know I threw a lot of information at you. I've received countless questions from you guys, and I hope I was able to answer most of them. The take home message is this, do not panic and do not sell your stocks right now. The only reason you should sell your stocks is if you think this company will not survive and if it won't be around five years from now. Everyone should take this time to boost their emergency savings fund, especially if you're worried about your job and future income. For everyone else, take advantage of this opportunity and buy quality stocks and ETFs at record level discounts. But don't spend all your money at once. Spread out your investment over the next several weeks. And of course, the most important thing is to be safe and keep yourself and your family healthy. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every week. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Canadian t-shirt, click my link in the box below or click the link on my homepage. Be sure to tune into my next video where I'll be breaking down what is an RRSP and how to use an RRSP to minimize your tax bill and maximize your long-term growth. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.